Another thing that you might want to check in terms of collisions is this chart. It's in the documentation. You can see it's uh, in the Sphere Collider class documentation. And it basically explains which things collide with which other things and which things don't register collisions. Um, and you can see here, this is for triggers, things that are set as triggers. Uh, things that are kinematic rigid body colliders will only collide with these things. Static collider means like an object that doesn't have a kinematic rigid body on it, but you're still moving it around by sending its position. You can see that those don't really collide with as many things. That's another reason why a kinematic rigid body is usually a good default thing to use if you're using triggers. So I realize it sounds a bit confusing, but keep this in mind and, and check this chart when you're building your own projects because it definitely comes in handy for reminding yourself, oh yeah, these things need to have these things on them, otherwise they don't collide with these things, all that. Also, just a general point, it's cool to bookmark all the kids, all the cool kids are doing this, they're bookmarking the script reference page um, because you can just search for stuff in here like, oh, send message, and then you can see, oh, send message function, how does it work, all these things. So this is a really useful thing to have bookmarked for whenever you need to look something up, even things that you don't know about yet. Often in Unity, things are named really well, so if like, if you never had sent a message before and you're just like, I don't know how to send a message, I'll search for send message, you'd actually find the send message function. So it's pretty handy to have that around. You can see I have it, like, bookmarked right here, so I can just hit it. It's also up here in the menu, scripting manual. So keep that in mind when you're working on your own stuff. So back to the shot script. Every frame we're going to move the position to the right, and we're going to multiply a speed value by time dot delta time so it's frame rate independent again and we can set speed to whatever we want in the prefab because we left a variable open for that so we can change it to like really really fast shots if we wanted to um, and then this is the magic function because we set up all this crazy trigger stuff now we can get an on trigger enter callback a callback function is just sort of a way of saying a function that gets called when something happens or you could even go further and say after something happens. Um, in this case, right after that collision happens, we're going to get this on trigger enter callback. It's going to also give us this collider object, which basically a collider is, we've already seen it, it's, this is a collider, this is a capsule collider. The enemy has a sphere collider trigger on it. So when our shot hits the enemy, we're going to get that sphere collider back. But we need to figure out what we're actually hitting. Because say we made um, a bunch of obstructions in the game, like walls and stuff, or say we made things like power-ups that we want the player to collide with, but we don't want the shot to collide with them because we don't want to actually be able to shoot the shots and or shoot the power-ups and blow them up. So we need to determine what kind of object we're hitting. And there's a few ways to do this, but the, one of the best ways and simplest ways uh, is using tags. You can see up here in the inspector for any game object there's a tag parameter with a pop-up menu. And we can actually change this pop-up menu. We can add, say, hoop to the uh, tag manager if we wanted to. And then that would show up in the list of available tags. So say, oh, we could tag shot as poop if we wanted to, but why would we do that? That's stupid. Um, so we've created our own tag called enemy, and we've put it on the ship enemy so that we know that it's actually an enemy. Now, what are the other ways you could tell it's an enemy? Well, you could check to see if it has an enemy script component, but because we don't want to make the shot dependent on knowing about the enemy, we're not going to actually try and get the script component out of it, because what we could do, see if I can spell enemy properly, we could get, we go the other, uh, I guess, game object, Again, other is the collider object that came in, and the collider has a reference to the game object that it's attached to. We could do get component, and we could get the enemy component, and then we could be like, oh, enemy dot take damage. So this on damage function we call specifically on the enemy. First of all, this is a lot of typing that is unnecessary. Also, if we want to change this later so that shots can hit things that aren't enemies, we need to write a special case for each of these things, like, oh, shots need to hit power-ups. Well, let's get power-up component, blah, 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 blah. 
and then we'd have to check to see, oh, which one is it, and we'll call that one, and it's like, ah, too much work. So it's easier to just check a tag, and then uh, send a message. Now there's an even better way we could do this, and that's to make a damageable component. And that could be like you could throw it on anything and then the shot would check for that component and send it messages and then that would kill whatever object it's attached to. But that's a little too complicated for what we're trying to uh, demonstrate here. But keep that in mind for your own projects. Anyway, in this case what we're going to do is we're just going to send a message to whatever object we happen to hit that has an enemy tag on it. So this is where the magical send message stuff happens. We get the game object out of the collider that came in. Very simple, it's just dot game object. Dot send message. So this is a function call, send message. And we give it the name of the function that we want to call. In this case it's on damage. And these are the parameters that we want to pass in. We don't want to pass any parameters. So we just set it to null. Now we can go look at the enemy here and see that the enemy has an on damage function and it takes no parameters. So this is what gets called when our send message function goes through. It gets called instantly too, just like a regular function call, except we didn't have to actually get the type of the object. We didn't have to get an explicit reference to an enemy script to call this function. We just needed to get any game object. Why are you doing that? Okay. So what happens on damage? Well, we play um, a sound effect, we subtract our health, if our health is less than zero, blah, 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 blah. Basically, the enemy can handle taking the damage however it wants. Um, so how can we change this layer? Well, we could basically give shots a damage parameter and be like, damage. And then you could set the damage parameter in the prefab. You can make sh some shots that do more damage. And then you pass this through the send message function. And then we can, on this end, have a, oh, damage in. And then we could do stuff like health minus equal damage instead of just assuming that damage is always going to be 1, for example. So that's one way you could expand that. But we're not going to do that now. <laughs> okay. So that's one way to send messages. Now we're going to talk about the other way to send messages, which is much more complicated. But it's also way more powerful and it really helps because you'll notice here that we're still checking to see what the type of the object is. We're still sort of dependent on knowing something about it. Um, also, we need to have a game object to actually send the message. We can't just send the message into space and expect it to get somewhere. But the dudes at Flashbang have written a library that does let you send messages to space and you can expect them to get where you want them to go. So let's take a look at one, a few simple examples of that. Um, here's an example of calling one of those magical space messages here. Um, when the ship gets damaged from the enemy, and the enemy actually calls, does the same thing here. It calls an on damage function on the player. But again, it doesn't need to actually have a reference to the player. It just uses send message. Um, and the player here, when it receives that, creates an explosion and it does this new message player die <clears throat> one thing you'll notice is the new is actually optional you don't need it um, you could just write message player die if you wanted to but what is this message player die like where did we create this thing where is it defined well it's actually in this messages folder here and right now we only have two message player die message score points and here's the definition. Now this gets a little bit complicated if you don't understand object-oriented programming. I'll try to explain this as simply as possible. Um, 